This vulnerability has to do with remote direct memory access in QEMU. So QEMU is a emulation virtualization system. It started out as emulation, added virtualization later. And in the context of this bug, we're going to be dealing with specifically a pair virtualization. So pair virtualization is when instead of the virtualization system trying to run an unmodified operating system, it's instead going to run a modified operating system that intentionally is modified to make virtualization easier. So there is pair virtualized support for a capability called remote direct memory access, RDMA. Now, in normal physical systems, RDMA is supposed to make it so that one system can access the memory of another system, essentially bypassing the CPU. So it gives the network cards capability to do direct memory access between systems. So in QEMU, it pair virtualizes this. And the idea would be that, you know, you could have two VMs acting as if they were two hosts and they could RDMA between each other, or maybe you have some host out over the network talking into a VM that has pair virtualized RDMA support, and that could use that support as well. So in the context of this attack, we're concerning ourselves with a malicious guest OS that wants to break into the hypervisor, break into QEMU, and in so doing, it would now have code execution capabilities in the context of an application running on the host OS. And from there, they could potentially do a privilege escalation to further take over the host OS. But either way, they will have already escalated their privileges by getting out of this jail, escaping the jail of virtualization onto an application running in the host OS. So for this vulnerability, some of the acid fed to QEMU in support of RDMA is going to ultimately influence the initialization and lead to uninitialized access. So we're going to have a structure that is going to be incompletely initialized, and we're going to have relatively simple code that has to do with initialization and ultimately access of the uninitialized content in a way that the attacker could potentially control. So go ahead and look at the website now to check out the code and find the uninitialized data access vulnerability.